Hey everyone, and welcome back. You know we love it when you send us those intriguing sources. You definitely outdid yourselves this time. We're diving into some fascinating territory today in Nikola Tesla and something called the 369 method. Now, it's a fascinating blend. Tesla, I mean, we all know him, the electricity genius. Right, a true visionary. But this 369 method, this is where it gets a little, I don't know, out there. Definitely a departure. It's like he took a hard left from science into, well, maybe the twilight zone, talking about manifestation, cosmic power, all that. It's definitely a unique intersection of his genius and some less conventional ideas. So we're really gonna need your expertise today to help us untangle this one. I'll do my best. Where do we even begin with this? What do we make of a mind like Tesla's venturing into this territory? Well, it's important to remember that the material you sent tries to blend Tesla's legitimate brilliance in electrical engineering with a concept that's not exactly, shall we say, backed by hard science. Okay, so let's break it down then. For those of us who maybe missed a chapter or two in our history books, remind us what made Tesla so groundbreaking in the first place. Absolutely. So we're talking late 19th, early 20th century. Tesla was a revolutionary. He revolutionized how we power the world with his work on alternating current. Right. Not just the name behind a cool electric car company. Not at all. His impact on technology is huge. <laughs> Induction motors, radio communication. He even laid the groundwork for technologies like X-ray technology. Okay, so we're talking serious innovation here. Oh, absolutely. But then we get this curveball, the 369 method, supposedly Tesla's secret weapon for, and I'm not kidding here, tapping into cosmic power for manifestation. Did he actually jot down a blueprint for bending the universe to our will? Well, not quite a blueprint. The material you sent links into Tesla's genuine fascination with energy, frequency, and vibration. Okay. He did believe those were the keys to unlocking the universe's secrets, but maybe not in the way the 369 method interprets it. So are we talking like Star Wars Force stuff here? Not quite, though I have a feeling Tesla might have enjoyed that analogy. But in all seriousness, his insights in those areas, while seemingly mystical, did lead very real, very important advancements. What's interesting is how this 369 method takes those concepts a step further. Yeah, it's like stumbling upon a cosmic code almost. This source material really hypes these numbers, three, six, and nine. They're not just digits, they're practically divine, woven into the very fabric of existence itself. What's the deal with that? Right, so that's the claim. The source material points to things like the flow of time, past, present, future, or even the structure of a day, 24 hours, which if you add the two and the four, you get six. Yeah. 60 minutes, 60 seconds. Oh, okay, I see where they're going with this. They even go as far as to look at atomic structure, emphasizing that atoms are supposedly 99.99% .99 empty space, highlighting those recurring nines. I'm seeing a pattern here. Right. But is it a cosmic symphony or just our brains finding patterns where there maybe aren't any? An excellent question. But before we go full conspiracy theorists, let's talk about the method itself. How do you even tap into this so-called cosmic power? Asking for, you know, a friend. Well, the material makes it sound deceptively simple. Okay, I'm intrigued. First, you pick three positive affirmations. It can be anything you want to manifest, financial abundance, better health, maybe even finding that perfect parking spot every time. Gotcha, I've got my vision board prepped and ready. Then, the second step, you repeat these affirmations six times a day. Six, you don't say, as in the number of hours on a standard clock face before it resets. Coincidence, I think not. And lastly, you dedicate nine seconds to each affirmation. The goal is to really feel those positive vibes and actually visualize your desired outcome. Okay, so three affirmations, six times a day, nine seconds each. Gotta love how they lean into those magic numbers. Right. But let's be real for a second. How is saying these things supposed to actually rewire the universe? That's where things get a little fuzzy. The source material brings in something called vortex mathematics and the quantum realm, suggesting that Focusing on these affirmations, for whatever reason, draws them from a realm of possibility into reality. Hold on, so you're telling me my dream life is just chilling out in some other dimension, and if I just whisper the right affirmations, I can unlock the door? Well, it's a captivating idea. Sounds like a sci-fi movie plot. Right, and that's an important point. These connections to vortex mathematics and the quantum realm, well, they're highly speculative. I mean, imagine Vortex Mathematics as like a system that some believe reveals these hidden patterns and numbers in nature, but it's not exactly scientifically sound. Okay. And then you have the quantum realm. It's like this place where all these possibilities exist, like radio waves. And this method is the dial trying to tune you in to the right frequency. 
It sounds cool, but it's not exactly backed by scientific consensus. So no disrespect to Tesla, but are we saying the 369 method is less science, more science fiction? That's the thing, it's not a simple yes or no. While the scientific basis is shaky at best, the method does use things like positive affirmations and visualization, which actually have a basis in psychology. Yeah. For example, did you know Tesla used to walk around a block three times before entering a building? Oh, you're kidding. Tell me more. Dead serious. Almost an obsessive relationship with these numbers, wouldn't you say? Okay, that's both fascinating and a little bit eccentric. Exactly. Yeah. But it just goes to show how deeply these numbers were woven into his thinking. So less about the numbers themselves having magical powers, more about Tesla's, shall we say, strong belief in them. Perhaps. And it makes you wonder, was he onto something groundbreaking? Or was he a man of science, limited by the beliefs of his time? It's a good point. But we're just scratching the surface here. What do we actually know about Tesla's views on energy, frequency, and vibration? Was he building cosmic battery packs, or was there a different method to his madness? We'll get into those intriguing questions because there's so much more to unpack. Stay with us, folks, as we take this deep dive even further. Okay, so we've laid the foundation here, this 369 method, equal parts intriguing, equal parts perplexing. Definitely a head scratcher. It's like we're trying to solve this cosmic riddle, right? We've got these numbers, these affirmations, a dash of cosmic mystery. I mean, are we on a wild goose chase here, or is there actually a method to Tesla's madness? Well, I wouldn't say the goose is cooked just yet. Remember, Tesla wasn't just playing number games. He was grappling with these fundamental forces of the universe. Right. To really get a clearer picture, we need to kind of dive deeper into his actual work. Right, because anyone can claim a connection to Tesla's genius. But did he actually leave a trail leading us to this 369 method, or is that a leap? That is the million dollar question, isn't it? It really is. While the source material tries to draw those connections, it's important to try to separate the hype from the actual historical record. Okay. Tesla was obsessed with energy, frequency, and vibration. Yes, but not in a purely mystical sense. Okay, so less about manifesting desires out of thin air, more about understanding how the universe ticks. Exactly. Think of it this way. Imagine Tesla as this conductor trying to decipher the symphony of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. right? He believed that these three elements, energy, frequency, and vibration, these were the fundamental notes in this grand cosmic symphony. Okay, I like that analogy. Right. So how did he actually apply these principles? Did he leave behind like blueprints for a cosmic orchestra or was it more grounded in reality? Thankfully, more grounded or we'd be having a very different conversation. That's true. But Tesla's genius was really in bridging his understanding of these principles with practical application. So give us an example then. How did this translate from theory into an actual tangible invention? Well, take alternating current, for example. That was his crowning achievement. Right. Tesla didn't just stumble upon AC power. Yeah. He had this deep understanding of the relationship between electricity, frequency, and the generation of electromagnetic fields. It was through manipulating these elements that he was able to revolutionize how we power the world. So while others saw electricity as this static force, Tesla saw it as this dynamic interplay between energy, frequency, vibration. He was tuning in to the very rhythm of electricity itself. Exactly, and it was that fundamental understanding that fueled his inventions. Okay. But here's where it gets even more interesting. The 369 method, for all its mystical language, it touches upon this power of focus and intention. Okay, so back to those positive affirmations. Right. Is there actually a scientific leg to stand on here, or are we venturing back into the realm of wishful thinking? Well, let's be clear. There's a difference between scientific evidence and the power of belief. Right. Well, the 369 method, it might not hold up to rigorous scientific scrutiny. Sure. The principles of positive psychology do offer some intriguing parallels. Okay, I'm intrigued. Break it down for me. Have you ever heard of the placebo effect? Of course. Right. Perfect example of how our beliefs even without a direct physical intervention, can create tangible changes in our bodies. So if I believe that a sugar pill is a miracle cure, my belief itself can trigger a healing response. Exactly. It's been documented time and again. Wow. Our minds are incredibly powerful, and harnessing that power, even without fully understanding the mechanisms behind it, mm -hmm. is a core principle in practices like meditation, visualization, even just positive self-talk. So while we might not be bending the universe to our will with the 369 method, we might be tapping into something equally fascinating, 
the power of the mind to actually influence our reality. Now you're getting it. Okay. And this is where the 369 method, despite its questionable claims, it offers a very interesting framework for exploring these concepts. Okay, I'm on board so far. Right. We've got Tesla's genuine brilliance. Absolutely. The power of belief and this intriguing possibility that we can influence our reality through focused intention. But where do these numbers, three, six, and nine, where do they fit into all of this? Were they truly magical to Tesla? Or is there, you know, a simpler, more rational explanation? Oh, that's the crux of it, isn't it? It really is. We've got Tesla the scientist and Tesla the, shall we say, pattern enthusiast. Right. To understand his fixation on these numbers, we need to dig a bit deeper into the man himself. Because perhaps, just perhaps, those numbers were less about you know, unlocking cosmic secrets and more about deciphering the language of his own brilliant mind. Ooh, I like where this is going. So are we about to psychoanalyze Nikola Tesla? Not quite psychoanalysis. Okay. But definitely a glimpse into the mind of a genius. I'm here for it. Let's go. We're back. And I don't know about you, but I feel like we've been on quite a journey. It's been a wild ride for sure. From Tesla, the electrical engineer, to Tesla, the cosmic code breaker with a little detour into the power of belief and the mysteries of the human mind. It's all connected. It really is. So where do we even go from here? Well, I think to really understand the 369 method and its alleged connection to Tesla, we need to go back to the source, Tesla himself. Because maybe the key to this whole cosmic puzzle lies in understanding the man behind the numbers. Exactly. Now, Tesla was notoriously private about his personal life. Right. But we can glean some insights from his writings and his work. And remember how we talked about his fascination with patterns? Yeah. This wasn't just a quirk, it was fundamental to how he approached the world. So more than just liking things in order, he was looking for those underlying patterns as if they held the key to something bigger. That's right. Tesla was utterly convinced that the universe operates according to these fundamental laws and principles and that those laws could be expressed mathematically. Okay, so I'm starting to see where this is going. So for Tesla, it wasn't about magic numbers. It was about the elegance of math as this like universal language. Now you're getting it. There's this famous quote attributed to him. He said, if you only knew the magnificence of the three, six, and nine, then you would have a key to the universe knew you were going to bring that one up. That quote, it's like the holy grail for 369 enthusiasts, right? Right. But let's be real, it's also incredibly vague. It's true. What did he actually mean by that? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? It really is. And unfortunately, Tesla, he never really elaborated on what he meant by that statement. But we can look at his other writings, his approach to science, and kind of make some educated guesses. So put on your detective hats, everyone, because we're about to analyze this quote like it's a cryptic message from beyond the grave. All right. What are the prevailing theories here? So one theory is that Tesla was hinting at a deeper mathematical relationship between these numbers. You know, perhaps something related to the fundamental laws of physics or the structure of the cosmos. Oh, okay. Maybe he stumbled upon a pattern that he believed held the key to understanding the universe on a deeper level. Like a hidden code within the fabric of reality itself. Right. It's definitely a tantalizing idea. It is. But is there any actual evidence to support that beyond, you know, Tesla's work? Well, that's the challenge, isn't it? Tesla was known for making these bold claims, mm -hmm. but he wasn't always so forthcoming with his methods or evidence. So it's entirely possible that he just hadn't fully developed these ideas, or maybe the evidence has been lost to history. Or maybe he just hit a dead end. It's important to remember that even geniuses can be wrong. Right. Tesla was brilliant, but he wasn't infallible. Exactly. And I think that's crucial to remember as we kind of grapple with his legacy. Yeah. It's tempting to put figures like Tesla on a pedestal, to see them as almost superhuman. But the reality is they were brilliant, flawed individuals, just like the rest of us. It's a good reminder that even the most brilliant minds are shaped by their experiences, their time period, you know. They've got their own biases, their blind spots, their moments of pure speculation. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's a valuable lesson there for all of us. We should approach the world and even the legacy of someone like Tesla with this balance of curiosity and skepticism. Mm -hmm. To question, to explore, and to never stop seeking the truth, even if it means challenging what we think we know. That's a good mantra, don't you think? I couldn't agree more. And who knows, maybe someday we'll crack the code of Tesla's three, six, and nine. Maybe, maybe. But until then, until then, we keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep those fascinating sources coming. Well said.
And on that note, we're going to wrap up another deep dive. So until next time, keep those minds curious, keep those questions coming, and we'll be here ready to dive into the next fascinating mystery.